we're about 30 days away from the Dallas Mavericks playing basketball, and if you're like me, you are dying to see what this new look Dallas Mavericks team can do, and we saw over the playoffs, we made it fairly far, I mean, we made it all the way to the finals with a broken Luka, a Kyrie who had stage fright, and Derek Lively getting hit in the back of the head, and in the words of Nico Harrison, we were one Clay Thompson away from winning the finals. So what does he do? He goes out and gets himself a Clay Thompson. But in an interview that happened just a few days ago, Clay Thompson highlights how he feels he's the missing piece for the Dallas Mavericks and highlights how he can fit with this team as well as how he'll fit with the other players. So in this video, we're going to take a look at that quote, break down Clay Thompson, see what he can provide for this team, whether or not he is the missing piece, and I'll give my thoughts on it as well. But how's it going, everybody? My name is Marcel Martin. This is Mavericks Digest, bringing the latest news on everything Mavericks related. Before we get started with today's video, the likes have been getting better. The last video, we didn't quite hit 300 likes. I, if if, if y'all want me to grow my hair back and see a hairline that goes all the way back here, just ignore it. Don't like these videos. But if you don't want to see me look ridiculous on your screen, please drop a like. If we can get this video to 300 likes, I'd appreciate it greatly. But like I said in the intro, Clay Thompson thinks he's the missing piece for the Dallas Mavericks, and a lot of people would agree. I mean, Nico Harrison said we were one Clay Thompson away from winning the finals, and you can make a case for that. I mean, the three-point ball was not falling. Our three-pointers could not go in. The Dallas Mavericks seemed to forget how to shoot. I mean, Kyrie Irving had stage fright while in TD Garden, and although we did look very well in Game 4 where we just destroyed the Celtics, and at the end, we still lost. We didn't We didn't win a championship. The Celtics did. We all know how that story goes. But now that the Dallas Mavericks have made all the right moves, that we have bolstered this roster, we got rid of the, you know, we were trimming the fat, got rid of players that didn't fit, we got better players, you could argue, to join the Dallas Mavericks, Klay Thompson could be that missing piece that could really take us over the edge. And if we just take a look right here, Klay Thompson answers questions during the hometown favorites weekend. How are you going to fit in the Dallas Mavericks lineup with Luka, Kyrie, and Derek Lively? Well, Klay Thompson had this to say. Klay Thompson, on how he sees himself fitting to the Dallas Mavericks lineup, he says, Me playing with Luka and Kyrie, that, that's what was attractive. Was seeing how, especially watching that championship series, I was really shocked to see the chemistry with the teammates. At this point in my career, I might not be able to run as fast as everyone or jump as high, but I can still knock down open shots, and I think I can be that missing piece for them. The defense can't guard Kyrie and Luka. They can't send as many double teams. They got to worry about playing the backside. With Derek Lively, that's what that's what was also super attractive. Gafford is so good at catching lobs and finishing at the rim. I think we have a chance to do something special and win a championship. And that's something you love to see, not just from some, some star that you picked up in the offseason, but a champion, someone who knows what it takes to win a finals, who's won four championships in his career for the Golden State Warriors. And arguably, he will be a Hall of Famer. Klay Thompson is that guy. But to know that he already can see himself in our system, that he already know he's been watching us. He didn't just choose the Dallas Mavericks because he was upset with the Golden State Warriors and he just wanted to stick it to him. Although I'm sure he does want to want to prove himself to all the doubters out there. But it's good to know that he did choose us because he still wants to win. He is still competitive. He didn't just go choose a team that was going to pay him the most money or give him the most minutes or give him everything that he wanted. Klay Thompson is a competitor. He wants to win. And with the way the Dallas Mavericks have been over the last few years with our sign trades and pickups, some players just don't really have that competitive edge. Some of them just want a big contract. Some of them want to be just a starter. But for Klay Thompson, although he is in his 30s, and you could argue he's not the same Klay Thompson, and he would acknowledge that as well, it's good to know that he still wants to win. He can still compete. And what he said is true. The defense, you're, you're going to have to watch out for Luka. Obviously, he's our guy. He's our number one guy. But Luka won't be as blitzed this upcoming season as he was last year, where he was the most blitzed player in the league. You're going to leave Kyrie open? Okay, let's see. You put your best defender on Luka, your second best defender on Kyrie. Okay, cool. There's Klay Thompson, who will knock down shots at a very high clip. I mean, I'll throw up his stats from last season because it tells you the true story about Klay Thompson. Last year, he put up 17.9 points, 3.3 rebounds, 2.3 assists, 0.5 blocks, 0.6 steals, 1.5 turnovers, and 1.6 fouls per game, while shooting 43% from the field and 38% from three while attempting nine threes a game. He shoots 39% on corner threes, 93% of his threes are assisted, and 61% of all shots are threes. And again, in the finals, for not the majority of the playoffs, but definitely for the finals, our three-point shot was our biggest issue. I mean, our defense was fine in the finals. We were able to hold the Boston Celtics below their, their regular season average of points. 
but we couldn't shoot the three ball. No one could make a shot. I feel like Luka was the only one, and although he didn't shoot the three ball very well, he was the only one that could make a three-pointer. But that whole problem, that issue is now solved when you have someone like Klay Thompson, who is also playing alongside, or you can say he's playing behind Kyrie and Luka, who already just garner a lot of attention on uh, from the defense. Luka's gravity is crazy. You could say he's his own planet. Planet Luka has the gravity of the defense where you're going to have to send your best defender on Luka and then you you're going, you're going to, have to decide who's going to guard Kyrie and then there's your next problem there's there's Clay Thompson probably sitting in a corner waiting to just catch and shoot shoot the lights out on a nightly basis or if you want to get you know a little spicy with it do a little pick and pop or a pick and roll Clay Thompson will be an amazing weapon for this team I truly believe that he is the missing piece and it's not just the three-point shooting which I do believe that we fix not just with Klay Thompson, but with Najee Marshall, who has improved his, who has improved his three point shooting, but also Quentin Grimes, who is another good three point shooter. But Klay Thompson's defense, and that's the thing that a lot of people are worried about, and that is a big question mark until the season starts. We won't really know where his defense is without having someone like Derrick Jones Jr. I get it. You could say that our defense is worse. Klay Thompson's about 34, almost 35 years old. He's had two major injuries where he missed two seasons in his whole career. I get it. But that's the beauty of it. If Klay Thompson can knock down shots and just play decent defense, I don't think that's going to be that big of a problem. We have enough good defenders. We have Najee Marshall on the bench as well as Quentin Grimes in case things get bad. If Klay Thompson is having an off night, cool, pull him out. We have backup. We still have Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving who can – we've seen what Luka can do when he's committed to defense. The stat came out the other day. Luka Doncic had the best defensive rating on the entire Dallas Mavericks roster during, during the entire playoffs. So if we have someone like Luka who – when committed to defense is a great defender. When we got Kyrie, who is also a good defender, we got PJ Washington, Najee Marshall, Quentin Grimes, our defense will be fine. Our perimeter defense is amazing. And then when you think about Gafford and Derek Lively, what they can do on the interior, I don't think there's going to be too many questions surrounding this Dallas Mavericks team. Once when the ball starts going, once we get about 10 to 15 games in, in the season, people are going to see exactly who we are. But to continue with this, is Klay Thompson the Mavericks missing piece? The Mavs defense has some uncertainty. Dallas is hoping that Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford's rim protecting ability will limit opponents in the paint. Meanwhile, PJ Washington, Najee Marshall, Quentin Grimes will help the Mavs perimeter defense. Thompson can still guard the perimeter at a respectable level as well. He isn't the defender he once was, but Klay can still make the plays on the defensive end or on the defensive end of the floor. From an offensive standpoint, Thompson is likely the missing piece. And that just exactly what I just said. Klay Thompson offensively that's the missing piece. That's the that's the firepower we need on this team, that next option. And we saw last season after the trade deadline, we moved away from being just an excellent or just even an average three-point shooting team. And we opted in to just attack the basket, a whole bunch of pick and rolls, throwing up lobs at where everyone was catching lobs every game. It felt like even Kyrie caught a lob. Our identity did change after the trade deadline. But it did feel like we started to just move away from, from the three ball, which in today's NBA is everything. If you're not shooting the three ball at a respectable level, you're not going to get very far. And although we did make the finals, if we could have just shot the three ball a little bit better, we probably would have stood a better chance. And that's where Klay Thompson comes in. As far as the defensive end, that's to be determined. That's to be seen. But it's a team effort. If Klay Thompson isn't able to really deal with his his assignment on defense we have options the team can pick it up we've done it for a few years with other players that were bad defenders the team will adjust and i think that we'll be fine but the last thing that i wanted to go over is this right here the article continues saying his presence is only going to help luka Doncic and kyrie irving if the defense wants to send a double team that means thompson or washington may be left open both players are more than capable of knocking down three pointers defenders will not be able to leave thompson open given his elite long range shooting ability Doncic is arguably the best player in the NBA. He often receives double teams. If the if defenses place their focus on Doncic while still having to pay close attention to Thompson, Irving will benefit offensively. Curving or curving Kyrie could have a big 2024-2025 season. And that's another thing that that is somewhat overlooked when we talk about what this team has done, getting getting Clay Thompson, getting Najee Marshall, Quentin Grimes, is that now that we have more respectable players that you can't just throw your your seventh or eighth man to go defend we have we have real threats obviously i said luke is going to get probably the best defender then it's going to be kyrie 
Then there's going to be Klay Thompson. Okay, cool. I hope your fourth best defender is good because now I got P.J. Washington, one, one of, if not our only player, who can put the ball on the floor and attack the rim, who can also shoot the three ball. We did see how he was shooting that three in the OKC Thunder series. Hopefully that does come back in this upcoming season. Hopefully his three ball does improve because that would just make us even deadlier, even deeper. And teams are going to have a hard time deciding how are you going to guard us? How are you, how are you going to defend us? And let's say you do a good job of locking down our wings. Let's say our three ball just can't go in. Then we're going to go back to the try and true method of just throwing up lobs. Daniel Gafford, Derek Lively, Najee Marshall, if you can, we got some lobs coming your way. And hey, if Clay Thompson can catch a lob this upcoming season, my 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 little wish list for the Dallas Mavericks will get just that much shorter. Give me give me a championship. Give me Luka Doncic winning MVP and give me Klay Thompson catching a lob. If Kyrie and Luka can catch a lob, Klay Thompson, you may be 34, but I'm sure you can still get up there. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you think that Klay Thompson truly is the missing piece for the Dallas Mavericks? I think so. So let me know what you guys think and we can have a conversation. But that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for making this far to the video. Make sure you check out our Twitter and Discord. Links in the description below. Consider becoming a channel member. We are doing another giveaway. The winner will be announced next weekend. And until next time, y'all take care. Drink water. Peace.